Morning farmers. It is April the 5th and I want to talk to you guys a minute about food security and why I'm doing this channel. And you know, in this day and time, it's not just important for old people and disabled people and poor people to have to have for food security everybody right now it's it's no joke there's people going hungry and and it's a it's a shame so i'm hoping everybody's doing okay out there and i hope i can help somebody and doing this little food five-year plan here i'm two and a half years in it and you know i can only do so much a year you know and because of that it's slow and sometimes it's disorganized and i mess up and things go wrong and things go right and it's just you know it, it is what it is but but all of that aside being self-sufficient, even on a really small scale, like mine, one-third of an acre, it's important to have a variety of different plants and diversity within them. So, um, with that in mind, I'm going to go over some of the perennial plants that are going into the food forest, as well as looking at my gorgeous tomatoes this year. So, uh, let's start with this side, and we'll just go from here. This is a medicinal plant, probably one of the best ones you can get. It's comfrey. They used to drink it as tea, but they found in modern times that that's not good for you. But it does make a great antibacterial ointment. It's really good for deep wound, you know, deep wound healing and disinfecting. Uh, 10, 15 times stronger than Neosporin. These dill, I've got a bunch of them. I'm putting them from uh, the cell, individual cells, into these four inch pots. And they're going to be used not just because they're an attractive plant that you can read that reseeds itself, but also it's, you know, I make pickles and, uh, you know, for the cucumbers and what have you. So, all right, these are valerian roots. I've been moving them out of the cells to see them here. Uh, the individual cells into these pots. They're what uh, valium is made out of the concentrated roots. But you know, for tea, if you you know, it's just a calming tea. And then I'm gonna let this stuff grow, of course, for a few years before I start to. Uh, Harvest it. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? This pepper just is amazing. I had it sitting on my counter this winter, growing, and now it's just taken off. This is auroch. It is a uh, wild. It's a domesticated lamb's quarter, a red cousin to the wild. Uh, that grows all over the place. It's a weed, but it's a wild spinach. It's really nutrition. We have a lot of nutrition. These are my beets, the golden beets. I've been doing test patches out in the garden, seeing how long, you know, how low they can go on temperature. There's about half of them lived, but these are just getting bigger and bigger. I'm going to have to get them out real soon. This is feverfew, another medicinal herb that comes back forever. Again, that's the valerian root. This is pretty interesting here. This is a toothache plant. It's an annual. You can identify it by the bullseye flower. And it has numbing qualities. If you have a sore mouth, sore throat, something like that. I'm going to make like a chloroseptic. Remember that chloroseptic spray that numbs your throat? I'm going to try and make a tincture out of it. But these flowers, if you have a bad tooth... You just bite this flower, and you're, t you're I bit, I just took a nibble off it. I couldn't feel my front teeth for two hours, and it didn't feel swelled up like it does at the dentist, you know, with the Novocaine. There's some herbs and 
annual green, perennial herbs. This here is safflower, uh, poor man's saffron. The quince from my cousin. Those are the other ones that I have nine of them all together now out of all those seeds she sent. This salad burnet is an old timey uh, perennial. Come is a short lived and a uh, short lived in the spring, but uh, it comes back every year. This is the whorehound. These two are root bound again. They root bound everything I put them in. They just instantly root bound. Now that one's in over a gallon. There's some baby. Oops, I'm trying to grow onions because I can't get them shipped now, <laughs> and that's something. There's some cinnamon basil again for the pest to, you know, annuals, smelly annuals like the basils. They repel pests too. So, uh, there's what we got so far. And, uh, oh, these little tiny leggy tomatoes. There was a few of them. There's a bigger one. Uh, all the Russian purple ones, they went leggy and went kind of goofy, so I just wrapped their leggy stems around and around in circles and buried them up to their necks. Ditto with the hosed ones. But uh, the rest of the tomatoes are getting pretty big. I'm pretty proud of them. I'm going to be extra careful of these this year because remember last year got messed up at the last minute. And they were gorgeous like this too. But this year's going to be a better year. I'm going to be much more careful. And plus I'm going to try not to get sick. You know, last year I caught a cold and ended up with pneumonia. So let's, I'm going to try to avoid that this year. And I hope everybody else out there is being careful. And I hope everything's okay. And start thinking about little bitty things you can do now. Just little projects can really turn into something, you know, big. I'm two and a half years into this five-year project. And, and look how, look how much I've gotten done. So... Every little bit adds up, I promise. So please stay safe and stay well.